Hello everybody, it's Miss Darling in the studio once again. Welcome. If you're here for the first time, I hope you'll stick around, subscribe, become part of my little art community, and uh, do some crafting with us. And so today, what I did is I took a, a sheet of 12 by 12 scrapbook paper that I disliked very much and would never use and I glued vintage book paper all over it to you know just give me something new to work on and I chose book pages that were light because I intended to put other images on top and I didn't want the background to be too dark so now what I've done is I took Mod Podge and spread all over it and then laid down a piece of napkin paper. This is from one napkin up here and this down here with the bird is from a separate napkin. And I'm about to lay down a piece of a third napkin right here and then I'll show you what I plan to do from that point on. So, let's get going. You want to make sure that you have really thoroughly adhered your book pages to the substrate and I did that with a glue stick so I could get the most consistent coverage possible. And so now I'm going to go over that with Mod Podge. And you want to remove all of the plies on your napkin. They're usually two or two, three ply, which means there is one or two sheets of white paper on the, on the back that you need to remove. And I've already done that to mine so I can't uh, show you that but I will show you from that point on so make sure you remove all the plies or you will have a problem doing this because the Mod Podge will not penetrate through all of the plies to adhere nicely uh, and really give you the adhesion and the coverage that you're looking for. So there's one coat of Mod Podge and I'm just going to lay this down right in here. I forgot that my napkin was going to go up into this area that I had done before and that was already dry. So, try to get a little underneath that now. And then lightly put a coat on top. You can do this with a, a paintbrush. I'm using a sponge dauber and uh, whatever type of applicator you want. You do want to do it very softly because the moment your napkin gets some moisture, moisture hitting it, it becomes even more fragile than it was before. Now 
You might even, I've had some places that have kind of pulled apart on me already, and so I'm kind of just uh, dabbing it now instead of pulling the sponge across it in hopes I don't break any else apart. I'm going to turn some of this imagery into dangles for my journals. And I think it's fun having the text in the background. And then when you're all done, just set it aside to dry. Now this Mod Podge that I grabbed up here is a gloss which is why it puts some luster on this. Since I'm doing dangles, I don't mind that it is a gloss. Otherwise, I would prefer to use a matte finish so that it blends in with papers that I use. But of course it's, you know, your choice what type of finish. Okay. So, uh, I think that's pretty well done. And I will set it aside to dry. And come back to it a little later. So, I'll see you soon. Okay, as you can see, I've been busy cutting out some of the imagery from my substrate, and it turns out that my images that I chose from the napkins I've initially been working with are really too big for my one-inch punch. Uh, you can see this is the only one that I got, and you really even can't even tell what that is. And so I have a one and a half inch. These are the one and a half inch ones here, and they're pretty good. I especially like that one. This one's good too. Um, and then I have a two and a half inch. And these will not be dangles, but will be what we call vintage coins. And so you see my images were just too large. And so if I'm going to get dangles that are worth anything in this particular type of process, I'm going to have to get a lot smaller focal point images and I don't know if I have any napkins on hand right now that will do that but be that as it may I do have plenty of coins and these possibly could become dangles I don't know they're pretty they're pretty wide but they could also be glued flat on a page and uh, once they're finished and so we'll progress and see what what we get. So here's the the substrate that I started with and I have these chunky punches and so all I do is you know just sit it in there and try to find a a um, an image and a position that looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to try to move away from this other image here so I can possibly use it on maybe a smaller one. And 
So we're going to punch that out. And then I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'll have to trim something away in order to go after this one. Let's see. I'll have to cut a little bit away right here so I can get close enough to it to get it more or less centered or at least positioned where I think it might look nice. It's a little tricky working with them after you have put Mod Podge on your paper. I need to trim away a little bit more. Well, that's pretty good right there. Like that. But now I think I'll try using this smaller one for the rest. See what I can get. Come in upside down here on this one. Hmm. Well, it's not going to do me much. Can't really tell what that is. Let's see what we have over here. That might work if I can get in a little closer to it. Okay, I'm going to try to get the body of the butterfly in there. I don't know how well uh, a person would even recognize that. Probably not at all. But maybe it doesn't matter so much if it's just colorful. So At this point, I'm just going to try to find uh, something colorful. Maybe I can do something with these leaves here. Let me come in and get it from... from this angle. That could look nice. myself. I'm going to try this large one for the, see if I maybe cut away too much already and this isn't going to work. Yeah, cut away too much. So we'll try coming in at this angle. You just kind of have to move around and uh, try different angles until you get what you want, if it's possible.
I'm going to position that, you know, asymmetrically. Alright, I've maybe gotten about everything I'm going to get out of this sheet. And let's see what we got. There might be two more things I can grab. Don't know how effective they'll be. You know, since you can't, since you can't tell what that is anyway, I'm just gonna not try to have it look like a butterfly. Just maybe some color on one side and page on the other. Well, what have we got up here? Maybe there might be something I can pull out here that's, uh, you know, just one inch. I'll have to get maybe a different angle. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. That's pretty much it, I think, out of this substrate. So let's get rid of the debris and see what we got. Close these up and lock them right after you're done using so you don't hurt yourself or somebody else. Okay, so here are my two and a half inch coins. And then I have these one and a half inch, which might be dangles, maybe, or, you know, just something to paste down on a page. And then these definitely are small enough to be turned into dangles, though you can't really tell at all what they are. It's just, they're just colorful. Okay, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time matching um, what I've got up with a backing, and I have backings for all of these from other things that I've cut out previously. So I've taken care of my one inch and my one and a half inch, and then I have these artist trading coins that I had worked on previously and so I've thrown these into the mix very happy with these very Asian vibe uh, to them and they worked out very nice I had one left over so I have one two three four five six seven eight I need nine. I need to cut out nine. And I'm going to cut them out of this brown paper. And I need two, two pieces of brown paper for every top design. So I get it thick enough to be, you know, be sturdy. So I'll need 18, and uh, there we go.
Okay, there's my 18. So, two will go with each. Okay, I'm not going to bore you with watching me glue all these down. I will glue the two matching brown ones together and then the design one on top. And that will be that. And over here, um, yeah, I think I should. I'm going to have to cut out something to put in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So I'll need thirteen one and a half inch. Close that up. So I'll have a couple extra spare ones. So these will go. This will be on the reverse side and one in between. Okay, and now I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine one inch ones. I'll have to start a new sheet. You don't have to use brown paper between. It can be you know, any color that you want. I like it because it's sort of neutral and, you know, just it's, I think, better than white. Uh, I just want to say that when I go to gluing them together, I'm going to look at what I consider the front and how I the vantage point that I want for the front and then I'm going to flip it to the opposite side and make sure that if this is my top on the front I have what I want as the top on the back if that makes sense. Okay so I'm going to adjust that so that this little design here is at the top matching the top of what I'm going to have on the front. So, here, I'm going to read it like this, so when I turn it over, I don't want to have this printing upside down. So, that's what you need to do each time before you glue the last piece on. Make sure that, that you've got them, you know, uh right sides out or design side out and um, what happened here my short one nope it got hidden okay so just you know make sure that your design faces outward no matter which side if it, whether it's the front or the back and glue it that way making sure that the top of the design is at the top on each side 
and then you're good to go. So I'll be back after I have all these glued together. Okay, we're all glued and now I'm just going to go around the edges and in ink and this just has a plain brown craft card sheet, um, card stock on the back. I'm not going to bother to, um, you know, distress that side, at least not at this point, but I will do the front. So when I last left you, I was pretty much kicking you <laughs> kicking you off to do your own thing and use your own creativity to figure out how to really embellish any of the artist trading coins that you might make. You know, they don't have to be two and a half inches, that's what mine are, but they can be any dimension. and. Then these, of course, are smaller ones, one and a half inches, and then, uh, or that, rather, these are, and then these are, are um, one inch down here. But I decided, you know, not to leave you hanging like that and come back and, and take these all the way to completion, and so that's what I've done. So let me show you what I've done. These three had a very similar color, color palette in sort of uh, a purple and red and so using some lace and some fabric flowers I had in my stash and some uh, enamel paint which is this enamel accents I you know added some dots and and to bring out the eyes of the butterflies a little more without making them too prominent I used a kind of a bronze color there and so uh, I'm real pleased with how those three came out and this one I encircled uh, just following a line that was in the graphic I encircled it with an off-white enamel and interesting thing happened in being very careful going around and dotting it for some reason this particular bottle that I have uh, just you know oozed out uh, a little bit uh, as it was drying and so I got these elongated areas and so I had three of them and I purposefully added a fourth one to make it look planned so you know when things like that happen don't freak out and you know just go with what's happened and uh, maybe do a little you know mimic a little bit more of of uh, what happened that you didn't expect to make it look planned and this one does not have another one that coordinated with it so it's a solo these two were very red and so I added some fabric flowers and a little bit of the black enamel dotting and then accented the eyes of the butterflies a little bit and so those are two companion pieces that I think worked out very nicely. Then these had a similar color palette. This one had a really strong orange flower back there but you couldn't tell what it was. This you can tell it's a an opened up flower but you couldn't with that. So with using fabric, flowers, and a little bit of white lace and I have these pressed flowers. Those are actual real pressed flowers. I went further in terms of creating a grouping 
and I think it all worked out nicely to, you know, sprinkle the color scheme around and wind up with two that are very similar but also different. Then I had these two that were the blue flowers. This one is a blue butterfly and blue flowers on the textural paper and I decided to add these little bronze dragonflies and uh, I thought they turned out real cute. And then I had three that had these brown and green leaves on it and so I had three dragonflies that were in a little lighter bronze coloring and so I put one on each of those. Then I had four that were cool color palette and so I moved away from the bronze and went for the chrome. So my jump rings are chrome and so are my little trinkets. Here we have a harp. This one has a flower. This one has a little passport and I added some accents there and uh, this has a, a lady's shoe and it's a butterfly in the background. So those are four that are color coordinated. And then lastly, these three had a very similar color palette and so because it's a warm, I did not go with the chrome. I went back to the bronze and put these little gears on those to dress those up. So I thought it worked out real well and fun. Lastly, this particular one uh, had a lot of greenery in the background, but you couldn't tell what it was. And I had one of the one inch things that I got the hole put too close to the edge and so it was no longer a hole and, and uh, ruined it. So instead of tossing it, I glued it on top of the bigger circular piece and then this is a dried flower that I had in my stash at the pressed dried flower and I thought that just you know turned out beautiful and so then the the rest of the one inch ones I have not done anything to them other than to add a jump ring and uh, just let them stand on their own so that's how these all turned out and what I did with them and I encourage you to you know, explore different options that you can come up with, whether in your stash or whether you have to make something or, or go purchase something. Create, you know, it's just really fun. From a time management standpoint, I think it works out really great to do a bunch of them at the same time rather than one-offs. That's it for this video, and I hope you've learned something. I hope you're inspired, and if so, please leave a comment, ask a question, give the video a like. I would appreciate it. And so, that said, this is Miss Starling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.